I'm going to try to solve the Rubik's Cube, but not just any Rubik's Cube, a four-dimensional Rubik's Cube. And to make things even harder, I'm going to later try to solve the four-dimensional 2x2 blindfolded. Something that only five people have ever done before. But first of all, what even is a four-dimensional Rubik's Cube? Let's drop back down a dimension to explain. So first of all, the 3D Rubik's Cube has six two-dimensional sides, that's pretty obvious. And if we were to express it in this projection, you can see five out of those 2D sides. And naturally, it's very easy to fixate on each of those 2D stickers, much like how people do the same on a normal Rubik's Cube. But if you really quite literally take it apart, you'll realize that it's made out of these 3D pieces. In order to solve, for example, the three colored red, yellow, and green corner piece, you'd have to put it between the red, green, and yellow center pieces like this. The red and green edge piece has to go between the red and green centerpieces in order for it to be solved. So going back to what you saw earlier, this is actually a 3D projection of the 4D cube, and you're seeing 7 out of the 8 sides here. Each of these are stickers. This is a corner piece, this is an edge piece, and this is a face piece, which doesn't exist on a normal Rubik's cube. And finally, this is a centerpiece. And if you didn't understand like 90% of what I just said, then that's okay because both non-cubers and cubers are probably equally as confused watching this. Anyway, the first step is to solve a cross. On the normal 3D cube, it looks like this. But on the 4D cube, this cross becomes a 3D cross. So it looks something like this, but it's kind of hard to see on the 4D cube projection because there are so many damn colors. I don't even know what I just did. This is like painful. So what if I do this? Turn it in. Oh yeah, that's good. So one, two, three, four is done. No, I think it's one more. It's just this one. This is the pink. Dude, where's the last piece? Oh, it's here, okay. Oh, it just vanished. Wait, wait, where'd it go? Where is the damn piece? Okay, here it is. Hold on. Oh, wait, 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 did I, did I just solve it? I think I did it, yeah, yeah. Let's go. And the next step was solving a white side, or in the case of the 4D Rubik's Cube, a 3D cube. I'm just gonna call it a cell instead of a side because that just makes things less confusing. Even though that sounds really complicated, the method of doing this was surprisingly simple. I just had to repeat the same four move sequence that I'd use on a normal Rubik's Cube over and over again, more or less. How many times do I gotta do this? Oh my god, I think I did it. And on this last part, I'm doing the inverse of the algorithm that you just saw with some four dimensional moves thrown in. But it's not as difficult as it sounds once you get the hang of it. And oh yeah. Yes. And then I need to solve the second layer. This follows similar ideas to solving the white side, but it takes much longer because you have to solve six times as many pieces in 4D. But for some reason, I seem to struggle with this step more. On a normal Rubik's Cube, you only need to turn a 2D plane on top to find the piece you want to solve. But in 4D, it feels like a whole cube, which is very strange. Also, while the algorithms are the same as on a normal Rubik's Cube, I kept on getting a mental blank halfway through for some reason. Wait. So my brain's just lost. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. B, U, F, U prime, F prime. Yeah. I think it's this. No, it is not. Why can't I do it unless I do it on the Rubik's Cube first? That's so strange. It's like, dude, 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 dude. Okay, U, F, U prime, F prime. Yeah. I don't know why, I just need a Rubik's Cube for some reason. And then for the second half of the step, I had to use the funky 4D version of the algorithms I just used. But eventually I got used to it, and eventually I managed to solve the full middle layer. Although I don't have footage of the ending for some reason. Okay, okay I think I got it. And then we get to solving the OLL, or in layman's terms, getting a 2D face on top, all the same color. So the first part of this is just to get like a yellow cross on top. So F. R, U, R prime, U prime, F prime. I don't know if that did any, or maybe it is solved and I just can't tell. Is it correct? Now this is meant to be an easy step using another algorithm straight from the normal Rubik's cube, but much like some previous steps, I just got really confused with recognizing what I was even trying to solve. I think I'm, I just messed it up again. 
Okay, we have like, it could be an, a line like this, R prime, U prime, F prime. And that should, I think, get some stuff to the top. I don't know if we did it though. Okay, we, but then I realized I was looking at the wrong pieces and once I figured out what I was actually trying to solve, things were pretty easy. Okay, that's done. And then it came down to doing all of the edges. According to the tutorial I learned, yeah, you just spam like the same algorithm over and over again and it just somehow magically works. And yeah, after I'd solved all of the edges, I had to solve the corners. Yeah. Oh, you can turn it like this to set up here, okay. Here I had to set up pieces to a 2D plane where I can once more perform normal Rubik's Cube algorithms. But to do that, I had to use a new technique called RKT, where I set up anything that isn't a right side move into the right side using the inner cell. U2, switch it back, R prime. But then I ran into a case that doesn't show up on a normal Rubik's Cube and spent ages trying to figure out how to fix it. Cases are here. Also these, wait, how do I? But after spending a ton of time off camera trying to figure it out, I managed to get a case that shows up on a normal Rubik's Cube. I need to do a D, but I have to rotate this here. D, R, move this here, D prime. Move it back, R prime, move the upper face, boom, boom. This should be, oh. Yes! Let's go! And then came the last step. On a normal Rubik's Cube, this involves solving the remaining 2D plane of colors left with a single algorithm. But once more, if we upgrade this 2D plane of colors to 3D, we get, you guessed it, a completely scrambled 3D Rubik's Cube, which I have to solve entirely using RKT. Except that the first layer would be solving the red side and the last layer would be solving the orange side. Okay, I think it's done. One of these. And then back. Okay, we've got the first two layers done. Uh, this is so trippy. Okay, to the F frame. Okay, we've got a cross on top, it's good. R, two R frame, U frame. Sexy and it's a U sexy. 40 version. U prime, R frame. Okay, we went to the orange. What PLL is this? This is a J prime, right? I think this is a J prime. R. U2. Then L prime. I feel like I'm like five moves away from solving it, but I just don't know how to turn it. Wait, hold on. Oh, wait, 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 wait. What, what, what just happened? Wait, wait, how do I... How do I fix this? Let me just keep pressing around with this there if something works. Please, oh my god, just solve itself. Okay, they're opposites. Oh, whoa. Oh. <laughs> of course, yeah, I forgot I could do this move. I'm such a dumbass. That is such a dumb finish, my god. But now for the real challenge, solving the 2x2 two two Rubik's Cube in 4 dimensions blindfolded. Now at first, I thought it would be easy because the beginner's method for solving the 3D version is surprisingly simple. Step 1 is to memorize all of the pieces using a string of around 8 letters, one for each piece. And step 2 is to solve one piece at a time by using the same one algorithm over and over again with some setup moves. The only issue though is that the algorithm is pretty long, and in 4 dimensions, I have to use RKT, meaning that it's even longer. Which is fine because it doesn't matter how long it takes for me to solve the puzzle as long as I succeed. Except that the algorithm just doesn't work in 4 dimensions because there's this weird layer misalignment. So I decided to play around with some other more advanced methods which seemed to work better. But then I came across a much bigger oh, problem. Uh... Wait, this is... Wait, hold on. Wait, that doesn't make sense. Why is it? I'm so confused. What the hell is going on? That's not meant to happen. Now, if you don't understand why I'm low key freaking out, let me explain. So a fundamental rule of blindfolded solving is that if you solve one sticker of a piece, 
all of the other stickers will solve themselves. The problem is that in four dimensions, even if you solve one sticker, the other three stickers can still be placed incorrectly in three different ways. It's like as if you can solve the piece correctly in one dimension, but it's still twisted wrongly in another. So I did what's called a pro gamer move and completely gave up, making a bunch of dumb low effort YouTube videos instead, trying to solve a Mega Minx blindfolded but giving up in two hours and kind of just vanished for an entire month. But then during my procrastination spree, I thought of an idea. So I'd never seen anything between only one and all four stickers being solved on a 4D cube. So I thought, what if I could just focus on solving two stickers of each piece instead of just one to guarantee that the rest are solved? This seemed to add up, but even after rigorously studying a video of a guy completing the puzzle with this knowledge in mind, I was still really confused. Once again, I understand the theory, but my 3D brain was struggling to keep up. But then something in my head seemed to click. All blindfolded solving methods more or less follow the same idea. Do a setup, do an algorithm, undo the setup. But what I missed before was that on the 40 cube, I need to split it up into 40 setups and 3D setups. And the goal of the 40 setup is to move the first sticker to wherever the 3D Rubik's Cube stickers should be, as well as the second sticker to the inner cell, which feels like the inner parts of the pieces of a Rubik's Cube. Now, this is really weird and mind-bending at first, but once I could get the hang of it, the rest was just using 3D techniques and RKT. Although, there was yet another issue I had. The people who had succeeded on YouTube used 3Style, the most advanced method of solving the Rubik's Cube blindfolded. Now, this makes sense at first because, unlike other methods, it solves two pieces at a time instead of just one. But using it in 4D is much harder and uses a lot more brain power. But an idea from something unexpected came in clutch to fix this. While I was unsuccessfully trying to solve a Mega Minx blindfolded, I learned that the recommended method to use was a simplified version of 3Style called Orozco. While it solves just one piece at a time instead of two, meaning that I have to do way more moves, it makes setting up pieces and figuring out algorithms much quicker, and the reduced mental effort to figure things out more than made up for the huge amount of moves I had to do. I also got inspiration from the same Mega Mix tutorial to invent my own way of memorizing each piece. By memorizing the first sticker like how I do it on a normal 3D Rubik's Cube, and the second one by the color of the sticker. With a few extra rules because purple and pink don't exist in 3D Rubik's Cubes. And that meant I knew how to do both step 1, memorize the cube, and step 2, solve the cube. Which meant that I was ready to start practicing sided attempts. What I'd do is perform a setup and an algorithm, then check afterwards to see if I solved the piece correctly or not. This would help me fix up mistakes that I'd otherwise make during full blindfolded solves. And while I did have some other issues that came up as well and revelations to improve my accuracy and speed, the main issue was that I was randomly screwing up a few times in each attempt by just randomly turning a layer the wrong way for some reason. But eventually, I started trying full attempts anyway because even though my accuracy was low, all I needed was one success. Also, I'm graying out the cube instead of using an actual blindfold, but it's basically the same thing. Anyhow, the first few attempts all ended up being total failures. This continued and just didn't seem to be getting better. I also gave up a lot of attempts earlier because I messed up my memorization and couldn't be bothered fixing it. But that was until this attempt. Oh, oh no. Oh. Oh, that is so painful. <laughs> oh, 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 no. Pee pee. I don't remember memorizing that at all. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Everything was solved except just one piece, which is impossible on 3D Rubik's Cubes, but not in 4D, which means there's actually a step three. Fix the last piece. Now I knew this could happen in advance, so I'd memorize the orientation of the piece every time I moved it. But the one time I slip up in doing this properly, I somehow get everything else perfect. But instead of getting depressed over it, I use it as a chance to pivot my approach. Firstly, I'd go very slowly with every attempt and play it super safe. The opposite of what I did before. Secondly, I made sure to meticulously track the orientation of the last piece so I don't end up suffering again. And thirdly, I do whatever it takes to succeed. That's it. Oh, thank God. Yes. 
And finally, I did it. Now, if you want to try this out by yourself, I'll leave links finally. to everything I use in the description below, oh, but otherwise, man. see ya. I feel like way more will leave that excited at this point. I'm tired, I need to, I'm gonna rest after this. Maybe I'll lift. I need a lift, actually.